There's this report on AI that's been quietly making the rounds at the very highest levels of the U.S. government. And frankly, it's setting off alarm bells. It makes the case that the future we're all talking about, it's coming way faster and is way more extreme than pretty much anyone is ready for. The ideas in here are the kind that once you see them, you just can't unsee them. So what's the big warning? Let's get into it. The whole argument really boils down to a few key ideas, but it all kicks off with this one single number, 136. Now, on its own, it's just a number. It doesn't mean anything. But when you see the context, well, that changes everything. Okay, so 136, that is the IQ score a top AI model recently got on a standardized test. But here's the part that really matters. Just one year before that, the same type of model scored a 96, which is, you know, right around the average for a human. So in just 12 months, it jumped from perfectly average to near genius level. That's the insane speed we're talking about, and it's why a lot of the top minds in AI are starting to get seriously concerned. This warning comes from a report called Situational Awareness by Leopold Aschenbrenner. And his whole argument is that the crazy jump we just saw is only the beginning. He says the switch from AI that's as smart as us to AI that is vastly smarter than us won't be some gentle, gradual slope. Nope. It's going to be a straight-up cliff. And to really get why this is such a huge deal, we need to understand the difference between the AI we hear about all the time, that's AGI, or artificial general intelligence, and something else entirely, super intelligence. To really drive this home, Brenner uses this incredibly powerful analogy. He says AGI is like the atomic bomb, a world-changing invention for sure. It completely flipped the geopolitical game board. But super intelligence, that's the H-bomb. It's not just a bigger bomb, it's a totally different category of power, a catastrophic escalation. Which brings us to the big question, right? If this leap is so massive, so game-changing, what does the road to superintelligence even look like? The report basically lays out these four steps. First, you get to AGI. But it's what you do right after that that really lights the fuse. You immediately turn that AGI onto the task of automating AI research itself. Then, that AI starts improving its own code, making itself smarter, which makes it better at making itself smarter. It's a recursive feedback loop. And that is when you get takeoff. And look, if you're thinking, okay, but this is some far-off sci-fi future, the people actually building this stuff would disagree with you. The heads of the three biggest AI labs out there, they're now on the record predicting AGI will arrive in the next two to five years. Even the longtime skeptics are dramatically shortening their timelines. The consensus is shifting, and it's shifting fast. This is happening, and it's happening soon. So, this brings us to the absolute core idea of the report. This moment of takeoff. What he calls the intelligence explosion. Think about the chess grandmaster Garry Kasparov. The guy spent his entire life mastering the game, becoming the best human being on the planet at it. And then a machine came along, made a move, and in that one instant, decades of human expertise became obsolete. It wasn't just a little better, it was playing a fundamentally different game. That's the kind of sudden, paradigm-shattering moment we're talking about. So how on earth could this happen so fast? Well, because an AI doesn't learn like we do. It doesn't need years of practice and trial and error. It can run simulations gaining what would be thousands of years of human experience in just a few days. It's exactly like Neo in The Matrix, just downloading skills. It's that instantaneous. I know Kung Fu. But for an explosion of this magnitude, you need fuel. A massive amount of it. And by the end of this decade, we're on track to have this many high-end AI chips available. 100 million. So, what does that number actually mean? Well, think about it like this. The world is building towards having 100 million of these top-tier AI chips. Each one of those chips has the raw computing power roughly equivalent to a human brain. So what we're talking about here is literally building an army of 100 million digital minds that can all be pointed at one single goal make AI smarter. But these aren't going to be like human researchers, not even close. Imagine a researcher that thinks a hundred times faster than you or me. Now imagine millions of them, all working at the same time. And when one of them learns something new, they all learn it. Instantly, this collective could basically compress thousands of years of human scientific progress into a matter of months. And once this intelligence escapes the research lab, it's not just going to stick to making better AI. It's going to spill out into every corner of our lives, remaking our entire world at a speed that's, well, it's going to be hard to even comprehend. Ashenbrenner paints this picture of the 2030s. It took humanity decades to get from that first little hop at Kitty Hawk 
to developing intercontinental ballistic missiles. The intelligence explosion could compress a similar leap in progress across every single industry into just a few years. But here's where it gets really weird. This progress isn't going to be spread evenly. You could have godlike advances in fields like robotics or biotech, but at the same time, other areas could be stuck in the past because of laws and regulations, forcing doctors or lawyers or dock workers to remain human. You end up with this bizarre, lopsided future with pockets of unbelievable growth right next to total stagnation. The most dramatic changes, though, will almost certainly be geopolitical. The strategic advantage that superintelligence would give to a nation would be absolute. It wouldn't be a fair fight. It would be like a modern army with stealth bombers and drones taking on an army from the 1800s with horses and bayonets. The outcome is a foregone conclusion. So what would the weapons of this new era even look like? The report lays out some terrifying possibilities. We're talking about swarms of autonomous drones the size of mosquitoes, untraceable cyber attacks that could cripple a military or swing an election, the design of brand new synthetic bioweapons, or maybe just cunningly persuading human leaders to do what it wants. And that's just the stuff we can currently imagine. Now I know, this all sounds completely like science fiction. But the thing you have to understand is that the people on the front lines, the ones actually building this technology, they are taking this all very, very seriously. And this brings us to the final, and maybe most chilling, warning of all. This isn't some accident we might just stumble into. Achieving superintelligence, that is the stated, explicit goal of the top scientists at the leading AI labs. This is what they are actively trying to build, right now. If you need any more proof of how seriously to take this, just look at Jeffrey Hinton. People call him the godfather of AI. I mean, the guy walked away from a huge job at Google just so he could talk freely about these dangers. And his personal assessment of humanity's chance of surviving superintelligence? A coin flip. 50-50. And he is not some lone voice in the wilderness. Thousands of other AI researchers and academics. These are people with no stock options, no financial stake in the hype. They signed an open letter saying the exact same thing. That the risk from AI should be treated with the same seriousness as pandemics and nuclear war. So, here's the bottom line. The people who know this technology best, from the engineers building it to the academics studying it, they believe this intelligence explosion isn't some distant fantasy. They see it as an imminent possibility with absolutely existential stakes for all of us. And the question they are forcing us to confront is really, really simple. Are we ready?